Have you ever wondered how we determine the number of calories in this bag of Cool Ranch Doritos? If I eat this, I get 150 calories from it. Where does that come from? In today's laboratory exercise, I'm gonna show you how we identify the important molecules that allow us to get energy to power our bodies. So when you're reading in your chapter about macromolecules, remember we have three primary molecules that allow us to get energy when we consume those molecules. And those are carbohydrates, fats and oils, and proteins. So as we go through each one of these different exercises to figure out how we identify these molecules, you should follow along in your lab manual. So in our first station, what we're looking at is we are testing for reducing sugars. And these are sugars that will contribute electrons in solution, and therefore they will reduce an object. Remember, reduction is when something gains electrons. So to do this properly, we first start by loading two mils of our solution into a test tube. So you'll see I'm gonna take this solution of glucose, and I'm gonna load two mils. To figure out what two mils are, you want to suck up enough solution to this point, and that's one mil. You do that twice, and now you have two mils of solution. So watch carefully as I fill my test tube. So what we're doing in this exercise is something called a colometric assay. An assay is simply a term we use in science when we're trying to identify a particular molecule. Colometric is the term we're used because we're gonna use color to help us figure out if the molecule is present in solution or not present in solution. For this particular exercise, we call Benedix, and that's because we're gonna use a solution called Benedix reagent that will turn color in the presence of a reducing sugar. And what we're looking for is a color change from our nice blue to a brown, orange, or rusty green color. So let's look at how we do this type of exercise so we can get those results. So here we see our Benedict solution, and notice the nice bright blue color. That's because this solution has free copper ions that are floating around in it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use those copper ions to help us determine whether we have a reducing sugar. Because when we reduce these copper ions, they slowly start to change color to an orange brownish color. Right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two mils of this solution and we're gonna put it in our test tube. Now, this particular reaction takes a long time to happen at room temperature. It can take up to an hour for us to get results. So what we're gonna do is we're going to force the solution to occur faster during what we call catalysis. Remember in your textbook that catalysis is where we speed up the chemistry of a reaction. So in this particular case, I'm gonna add it to a water bath that's slightly below boiling. So this is gonna allow the solution to proceed within five minutes before we can get our results. So now that five minutes has passed, we pull the samples out of our water bath and we allow them to cool. So let's look at each one of our samples and talk about these results. These samples are called controls. And that is because we know how the sample is gonna react in our experimentation, and it gives us a point of comparison to an unknown solution. So in our first sample, we looked at banana juice. And as you can see, the sample turned a brownish color. This tells us that banana juice does have a reducing sugar in its presence. The next solution we have is glucose, 5%, that also turned brown, so glucose is a reducing sugar. Our next is fructose, and again, as you can see, fructose also turned the brown color, so fructose is also a reducing sugar. Then we have maltose. Again, although the brown color is slightly different than what we see with glucose, banana juice, or fructose, it still is a reaction, so we got a color change, so maltose is also a reducing sugar. 
But notice in our last two samples, both sucrose and water, we got no color change. The solution is still the original color of the Benedict's reagent. Therefore, no reducing sugar was found in either one of these solutions. These two solutions are called our negative control. In other words, the molecule we're interested in was not found in these two solutions. So you may have noticed that sucrose did not change color. Even though we know sucrose, its common name is table sugar. So why did it not change color? Remember that this test specifically looks for a reducing sugar. Unlike fructose, glucose, and maltose, this sugar does not donate electrons in solution. Therefore, it is a sugar, but it is not a reducing sugar.